Holy Time at Home. Hello, my name is Kimberly Thompson. I'm the children's librarian at the Cheviot Branch Library. The book for you I have today is Fancy Party Gowns, the story of fashion designer Anne Cole Lowell. The author is Deborah Blumenthal, that means she wrote the words. The illustrator is Laura Freeman, that means she drew the pictures. Fancy Party Gowns, the story of fashion designer Anne Cole Lowe. When she was old enough to thread a needle, Anne Cole Lowe's mama and grandma taught her how to sew. Wisp of cloth would fall from their work tables like confetti, and Anne would scoop them up and turn them into flowers as bright as roses in the garden. Anne's family came from Alabama. Her great-grandma had been a slave, so her family knew about working hard just to get by. Anne also knew that doing what you love could set your spirit soaring, so that's what she did, working near her mama in the family shop, making glorious dresses for women who went to fancy parties. But when Anne was 16, death stole away her mama. There was no one to care for her anymore and no one to make the dresses. The Alabama governor's wife was waiting for her gown. Anne thought about what she could do, not what she couldn't change. So she sat down and sewed the dress herself. Then she stood up and ran the business. In 1916, Anne got a job sewing dresses for a woman in Florida. A year later, the woman sent her to design school in New York. Anne was a good student and a fast learner. But it was 1917, and Anne had to study in a separate classroom, all alone, because she was African American and life wasn't fair. That didn't stop Anne. She kept on making extravagant gowns, and year after year, more and more women wanted to wear them. Elegant dresses, party gowns, no two alike. I feel so happy when I'm making clothes that I can just jump up and down with joy, she said. Finally, Anne saved enough money to open a salon of her own in Manhattan. She had big bills to pay, and sometimes not enough money to pay them. That didn't stop her. When Anne saw obstacles, she thought about what she could do, not what she couldn't change. One day, Anne got a special order. A lady in Washington, D.C. was marrying a senator. Seven years later, this man, John F. Kennedy, will become president of the United States. Anne bought 50 yards of the finest ivory silk taffeta and the trimmings to go with it. For months, she cut and sewed. The gown had a wide bouffant skirt with pleated bands and tiny wax flowers, and also made all the dresses for the wedding party. Then just 10 days before the wedding, Anne opened the door of her workroom. No, she cried. A pipe had burst. Water gushed everywhere, flooding everything. 10 of the 16 gowns were destroyed. Anne thought about what she could do, not what she couldn't change. She bought more fabric and trim and hired others to help. She lost money instead of earning it. In just eight days and eight nights, Anne and her team remade all those dresses. But when Anne brought the gowns to the mansion in Newport, Rhode Island, where the wedding reception would take place, the butler, who opened the door, told her she'd have to use the back entrance that was meant for workers. Anne said that if she had to enter through the back door, the bride and bridesmaids wouldn't be wearing her dresses for the wedding. She entered through the front door. The day of the wedding, all the world saw the future First Lady of the United States, Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy, in her magnificent gown and her bridesmaids dressed in blue blush pink silk fire. Hardly anyone knew something more important, the name of the woman who created all of those gowns despite the odds. Why? Because Anne Cole Lowell was African American and life wasn't fair. That didn't stop Anne. 
famous women wore her gowns at big galas and on television. I like to hear about it, said Anne. The oohs and ahs as they come into the ballroom. Anne didn't make fine clothes to get rich or famous. She made them, she said, to prove that a Negro can become a major dress designer. Slowly, Anne got the recognition she deserved. In 1961, she was named official courtier to honor her for the 33 Cinderella gowns she designed for a fancy ball in Omaha, Nebraska. After so long, Anne stood up before fashion's biggest names, head held high, and they applauded her. Thank you for joining us today for this African American History Month program. I hope you enjoyed the books. Have a great day. Get free books in the mail. Sign up today. Go to Ohio Imagination Library. Org to find out more.